Good evening. You're watching the main news on HKIBC. I'm Winna Wong. Here's a look at tonight's top stories. John Lee says the city cannot turn a blind eye on hospital COVID admissions and vulnerable groups. New COVID infections in Hong Kong stay below 8,000. And the city roasts on its hottest September day on record. The chief executive has stressed that the city cannot ignore the pressure hospitals face and the threat to high-risk groups when deciding on anti-COVID measures. This follows calls to ease curbs ahead of key financial forums later in the year. Maisie Mock reports. Health experts have suggested that COVID cases in Hong Kong peaked last week. But responding to calls for the city to open up further, Chief Executive John Lee said the government cannot turn a blind eye to hospitalization figures and protecting vulnerable groups. The hospital has already cut 30% of its service in order to deal with uh, the COVID epidemic. And also, uh, the high-risk groups are under real threat to their health and to their life because vaccination rate for these high-risk groups is still unsatisfactory. So whilst we are very conscious of ensuring that society can go back to day-to-day uh, -day life as freely as possible, economy to grow and competitiveness to be ensured, we have to balance the need with the risks. Calls for a relaxation in COVID curbs comes as Hong Kong prepares to host two financial forums later this year. The government organized FinTech Week starting on October the 31st clashes with a similar event in Singapore. A global banking summit organized by the Monetary Authority takes place around the same time. When asked whether Hong Kong would ease quarantine measures to avoid losing out to the Lion City, Lee was non-committal. He said the COVID situation differs from place to place and Hong Kong will adopt measures that meets its requirements. Bloomberg has reported that Standard Chartered Chief Executive Bill Winters will attend the banking summit. Maisie Mock, HKIBC. Members of Hong Kong's COVID-19 expert advisory panel have reportedly been ordered not to express conflicting opinions. We welcome, of course, different opinions and we always exchange views uh, freely. But we also want to inform the public of uh, decisions that the government made uh, clearly and precisely so that there will be no mixed messages, so that people will not be confused uh, with what government uh, wants to do and the rationality behind the government decision. Sources told the South China Morning Post that the six specialists on the panel were given House rules in black and white. They were encouraged to explain the government's COVID measures, but refrained from expressing contradicting views. The article added there were tensions between government officials and some panel members on lifting COVID restrictions. New COVID cases in Hong Kong have continued to fall. But health officials warn that the danger isn't over yet. Chloe Fung reports. Although there were more social gatherings during the three-day mid-autumn festival holiday, COVID cases dropped for the fifth consecutive day to 7,218, including 151 imported infections. Health officials suggested that the drop may be because some people were reluctant to be tested during the festival. They said despite the decline, the number of cases remains high and could stay between 7,000 and 8,000 for another two weeks. Another 343 people with COVID were admitted to hospital, taking the tally to 2,885, with 52 in critical condition. Ten more patients lost their lives to the virus. One was a 52-year-old woman who died when her cancer worsened. On an encouraging note, the condition of a 10-year-old boy in Princess Margaret Hospital has improved. The youngster who previously suffered from epilepsy can now breathe without a ventilator.
and officials will arrange a brain scan. With classes resuming after the long weekend, a total of 2,886 cases were reported from 991 schools, 23 of which were told to suspend some classes. Chloe Fong, HKIBC. Hospital Authority Chief, Ex Chief Executive Tony Ko has tested positive for COVID. He last went to work yesterday and has not traveled abroad recently. Ko found he was positive through a rapid antigen test this morning. He is in isolation and his office will be cleaned and disinfected. John Lee has revealed that some arrivals from the mainland have long been exempted from vaccination requirements because of the low risk across the border. He added that talks on a reverse quarantine arrangement with Shenzhen are making progress. Janice Lowe reports. Under the current vaccine pass requirement, overseas arrivals need at least two COVID jabs. But a mainlander revealed on social media Xiao Hongshu, or Little Red Book, that she was able to enter the city, although she was not vaccinated and had no exemption certificate. She said as long as visitors obtain a temporary vaccine pass that is valid for 180 days at the border or at a post office on arrival, they will be given a blue code in the Leave Home Safe app. Chief Executive John Lee said mainlanders have been exempted from vaccines because the COVID infection risk on the mainland is the lowest in the world. He added that the practice has not resulted in any imported case so far. Lee also said talks on the reverse quarantine scheme is making progress. The standards, of course, will have to be endorsed by the Shenzhen authorities because they are the authorities um, who will be uh, exempting the 7 plus 3 requirement after a person has uh, fulfilled his reverse quarantine requirements in Hong Kong. So I'm aiming at creating a system which will continue to operate uh, however the situation develops on either side of the boundary. Lee expressed confidence in reaching some sort of arrangement. Janice Lowe, HKIBC. Just one day after the mid-autumn festival holiday, Hong Kong recorded its hottest September day, with the mercury hitting 35.9 degrees at the observatory this afternoon. In Repulse Bay, where people took to the water to keep cool, the temperature reached 36 degrees, but the highest reading was in sweltering Shengshui at 38.2 degrees. The observatory predicts that it will remain very hot and dry until early next week. Police have taken away at least three people after searching the offices and warehouse of the main contractor of the ill-fated Mirror concert in July at the Hong Kong Coliseum. Officers brought along trolleys and suitcases when they went to the two offices of Engineering Impact in Hong Kong. A search was also conducted at the contractor's warehouse in Yao Tong. Meanwhile, the father of dancer Mo Li, who was badly injured when a giant screen crashed onto the stage, has declined donations for the moment. Pastor Derek Lee's statement came a day after tycoon Richard Lee, who is the ultimate head of the concert organizer, offered $10 million. The dancer's condition has improved and he's no longer in intensive care, but remains paralyzed. Tens of thousands of people in the Scottish capital, Edinburgh, have said goodbye to Queen Elizabeth before her coffin leaves for London. A heckler was arrested for shouting at Prince Andrew during a somber procession. The silence was piercing at St. Giles Cathedral in Edinburgh as the Queen's four children bowed their heads during a vigil. After Princess Anne, Prince Andrew, Prince Edward, and the new monarch, King Charles, paid tribute for 10 minutes, the public were invited to show their respects. The constant stream of well-wishers went on through the night and into this morning.
Earlier, a Thanksgiving service took place at the cathedral. Participants included Prime Minister Liz Truss and former Labour Prime Minister Gordon Brown. For everything, there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up what is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. Meanwhile, London is fine-tuning preparations for the next leg of the Queen's final journey. Elizabeth's coffin arrives in London later tonight, and she will lie in state at Westminster Hall until her funeral next Monday. While people across the country and the world mourn the end of an era, the Queen's death has also led to scab picking on controversies surrounding her family. Earlier, as the royal family accompanied her coffin along the streets of Edinburgh, a young man shouted at the Queen's second son. The heckler was detained for breach of peace. Andrew was accused of sexually abusing a teenage girl 21 years ago, a charge he denied. Most Britons are united in grief following Elizabeth's death, but some anti-monarchists have been arrested for publicly questioning why her son became king automatically. Are we really now in a place in 21st century Britain where a new head of state is proclaimed, uh, we're told to accept this person without, without any question, and somebody who speaks out against it is, is dragged off and arrested? It felt like I'd like slipped into the 16th century for a minute. Hill was later, in the words of police, de-arrested. He said he had been told that he was detained under new laws that allow police to act if they deem that a protest may cause disruptions. The arrests of people who questioned the succession triggered a debate on free speech in Britain. In Hong Kong, Chief Secretary Eric Chan has visited the British Consulate General to sign the condolence book for the Queen. People continue to flock to the diplomatic mission in Admiralty, with a queue stretching to Hong Kong Park for the second consecutive day. Bouquets and photos were placed on the ground and tied to the pillars outside. The consulate is extending the session to sign the condolence book, as it takes at least three hours to reach the venue because of the long queue. Major Hong Kong banks are offering higher rates for long-term deposits in a bid to secure funds. HSBC, BOC Hong Kong, and Standard Chartered are paying more than 2 percent for deposits of at least $10,000 for between six months and a year. The higher rates are only available to those who apply online. The move came as the Hong Kong Interbank Offered Rate, or HIBOR, rose after the United States raised its rates. The one-month HIBOR, a key rate for mortgage loans, has climbed to 2.01 percent, while the three-month HIBOR is now at a 14-year high of 2.79 percent. A look at the markets now. The Hang Seng Index closed down 35 points. Top 10 active stocks, Wusi Bio was down $13.30, Ten cent down two dollars and twenty cents. JD down ten dollars. BYD Company up six dollars and forty cents. In foreign exchange rates, the euro is at seven point nine eight British pound, nine point twenty. And in UK markets, the FTSE is up thirty two points. On to the weather now. If you thought today was hot. Tomorrow will be hotter, with the mercury hitting 36 degrees. It will also be hazy and very dry. Some conditions until the weekend. Now let's take a look at the weather around the world.
And that's our main news for Tuesday night. Join us for more news at 11. I'm Winna Wong. Good night.